to the value of following them through their progression of life. We don't just get them at five or six and then we might see you again when you're 10 or 11 or get you at 12 and maybe we'll see you when you're an adult or a young adult. They're here until they've quote unquote outgrown it and now that they're ready to go into the community and, and serve it yeah. with their talents. You know, in addition to that, you know, one of the programs is the teen pregnancy prevention program that we talked about it. And you're right, every program has to wrap around other programs. And I'll use one kid as an example. He's been here since he was about six or seven. He was here before I was here. When I came and started working at BFL 10 years ago, he was already in the program. So he inherited me, okay? Right. So this particular kid, we were able to see him grow up. He started off in an after-school program. Then as he became a teenager, he went into our slate program because he happened to be a kid that was involved in court. Then he actually... Um, now he's in the TPP program, so he got the TPP curriculum, and now he's in our Youth Leadership Academy, and he's about to graduate and go to college, so he's awesome. You know, so he, we've seen him go through all of the different programs, and you know, he's also a fabulous dancer, so he's part of our dance department. We have a, a, the Comba Youth Performance Ensemble, so they perform all over the place. So these kids are in so many different things, and you know, they be, literally become part of the family. Um, I use my own child, for example. She's 11 now. She started here when she was four. So she's wow. been in all the programs, and they know, hey, next year I get to go to Youth Leadership yeah. Academy. We try to make sure that there's a natural progression as they grow, that there's something for them to grow into that fits where they are in their development. So they're fully packaged, well-developed by the time you hand them off and say, put those talents to use. That work. is the plan. And then we have some that were in our program that now work for us. So we have... Uh, I think there's uh, four people that work in our after-school program that start off in our youth program that now work for us in the after-school program. You mentioned teen pregnancy prevention, um, certainly a concern that the community shares, yes. not just those that are in programs or those that found themselves early parents. Uh, how vital is that program here? Because you serve about 2,000 yes. youth just in that program alone. It's one of our largest programs. It's actually funded through the Office of Adolescent Health. So it's a federally funded program. We've been doing this particular round for about four years, but we've been in the business of adolescent sexual health development for about uh, nine years now. So we start off with the community-based abstinence program and then we moved into teen pregnancy prevention because we know that there's a need to teach abstinence but also to make sure that kids are informed about you know, everything that they need to, to be protected. Um, in St. Louis alone, you know, St. Louis is the, uh, the chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, you name it. We're at the top. We're like one and two in a lot of those different categories. And you know, the people that are dying of HIV right now at a higher rate than anyone else is people that look like you and me, African American women. And so how vital is this particular program? It's absolutely vital because we find that, you know, kids that uh, that have, you know, early pregnancies end up really not doing well in life in terms of economically because, you know, once you start off, you know, with a child in high school, a lot of them don't finish high school, a lot of them don't go, not, not all of them, there's a lot of exceptions to the rule, oh, but oh, it, it does make it a whole lot harder if you don't have that success sequence, mm -hmm. if you don't start off and, you know, follow one with one foot in front of the other. If you have, I'm 16 and I got to, you know, 16 and pregnant, you know, let's talk about this show, you watch it, you see the show, you know, those, real. those girls are not having a ball, you know, and so... Um, th that's, that's one of the things that we try to really, you know, talk to our kids about. We have two curriculums that we use. For the middle school, we really do focus on abstinence. So you start as early as middle school? We start at 12 years old in middle school. So we have sixth graders. Wow. And we start off, the curriculum is called Promoting Health Amongst Teens. We talk about abstinence really only, you know, but we, we do anatomy. So you know your body, you know STDs. You know how to make choices. We do a lot of role playing when you're in situations. How do you get out of those situations? And um, it's a very good baseline curriculum to start off from middle school because they are having sex in middle school now a lot, and we have the statistics to prove it because and we do pre and post <laughs> testing. We're also part of a national study, so we are actually studying these kids to make sure that we are actually having an effect on what they other behaviors. 
Um, then we move on to high school, and they do a curriculum called Reducing the Risk. And it's a 16 lesson curriculum, and it has a lot of the same elements. It's abstinence first, but we have chapters that do talk about contraception. We have chapters where they have a homework assignment that they have to go and call a family planning clinic. They have a homework assignment they have to work with their parents. So it's a serious, it's a serious curriculum for kids that are in some serious situations. We talk about the dating violence, and we talk about drugs and alcohol as a gateway into sexual behavior. So we cover the full gamut of the, the things that would get them into risky sexual behavior. And with the hopes that they will abstain, that is our biggest thing, we want them to abstain from having sex. Um, we want them to abstain until they're married, but at least abstain until you get out of school, until you get to, you know, we, we want you to, to delay as long as possible until you are physically and mentally ready to take on all those things that come with being in a relationship, um, a sexual relationship. Well, we thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> you are definitely the glue. You are definitely the glue. And uh, I I'm sure your efforts are much appreciated by the parents and, of course, by the children. And if you're dealing with 400 kids a day, imagine all the lives that you have impacted already. You know, let me say, I go places all the time and I'll somebody say, Miss Miranda. And it's like, this is a grown person. Well, who, you know, like, I was in your program. This is, I'm little Nikki. And I'm like, oh my little gosh. Nikki. Wow. You feel so old when you work with kids. Because <laughs> now I can see I've been here for 10 years and the kid yeah. that was here at 13 is now 23. And, you know, and, and they say, hey, can we come back and visit? You know, I love being in a program. And, you know, it, I get emotional every time I run into a kid. And it's almost every day that you see somebody that you've been able to touch with this program and know that what you do is not in vain. It's real. Oh, yeah. It's real. And our community needs it. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. We you. Yo, thank you for <laughs> telling the story. You needs know, to be told. Appreciate it. It, it definitely needs to be told. We're happy to, to come in and be the storytellers. Uh, so people know what's happening inside these walls. This is a big building, mm -hmm. and there's a lot going on in between these walls. A lot going on. A lot. A lot going on. And then, you know, with the vision of, you know, with Brother Malik's vision of, you know, healing the community, the whole community, you know, we can't help but to succeed if everybody's on the same page and we follow, you know, those things that BFL tries to teach us, you know, those principles with, uh, you know, the Guzo Saba. And we have such a great foundation that all we have to do is, you know, follow those 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 rules of society of unity and mm -hmm. self-determination you know cooperative economics yeah. that we have a guideline at better family life that helps us to get to the next level if we allow ourselves to be a part of it